Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. I am so grateful that you're here with me today. we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, plenty of stocks to buy in today's list. We actually had a little bit of a tech revival yesterday. We're going to talk about that. Obviously, the uh, stock of the day, which is still kind of working its way into a reversal, is Roku. We're going to talk about should we be looking to buy Roku stock? Should we be looking to start building a position? Or should we wait for a little bit more confirmation before we start to dip our toes in? Uh, all good questions. We're going to get to all of them today. We have a lot to talk about today, so stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so as with everything that we talk about here today, it is for educational purposes, but it's up to you to make that final decision. It's my mission to help you make awesome decisions so you become the reason that you make money. Uh, if you find these videos helpful, please do me a favor, hit that uh, like button and uh, hit subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Got a lot to talk about today, but if you don't mind, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to celebrate a couple of members of our boot camp today because I'm really proud of how they've been handling things. So I'm actually going to shift over and go into, um, first, I want to talk about, uh, I want to introduce Juan, who's a new member of our community. And I just want to briefly walk you through what Juan's doing right now. Closed a position in AFRM yesterday, uh, which I'm very proud of him and, and how well he's trading right now. Um, but Juan is actually a new member of our community. He just came into the boot camp maybe like a week ago, maybe no more than just about a week ago. But here's the big thing. Juan is participating his ass off. He is asking a ton of questions. He, if he's not sure about something, he's asking, I don't, I need a little bit more clarity on this. He's not afraid to post ideas. He's not afraid to learn. And Juan is seeing really amazing results very, very quickly. Now, I'm not taking credit for that. I'm giving Juan 100% of the credit because he's stepping up and asking questions, which is what I really ask everybody to do here, both in our private community, as well as here on social media. The only way for me to know how I can help you is for you to let me know, which means asking questions. And honestly, I love the chat. We could have the chat. That's perfect. But the best place to ask questions for a, a little bit of a deeper answer um, is in the comments below the video. So if you have anything that we cover here today or you have roadblocks that you have, that'll actually give me some information to help make a new video for you personally like I've done in the past. So first, I want to say excellent, excellent, excellent to Juan. Um, let's see. We've got Catherine. Catherine on the call with us today. Catherine's a member of our swing trade community. Simon, yes, we are going to talk about Roku today, uh, but I also want to highlight two other members of our community today. I just want to show you um, an email because I want to inspire you. This isn't about this is about them. I want to inspire you to wake up every day and say, why not me? Why can't I be the one getting those results? And then you keep working harder and you keep asking questions. All right. So what we're going to talk about here, I just want to bring this in with a little bit more detail because. One of them is a great trade in the same stock, and the other one is a um, uh, a lesson. So Ranesh has been our community for probably around two months now. Uh, and on the other side, the biggest thing I want to talk about here is this. And I know a lot of traders, especially day traders, just don't do this. And it is a monster part of understanding how to be successful as a stock trader, which is understanding that patience is a monster part of success. Not throwing your money away is a big part of success. And Ranesh, what, I think one of the biggest transformations that Ranesh has had, and, and again, the reason I'm bringing this up is I hope that you have the same thing, is understanding that when you don't dig yourself a hole and then the market lights up and becomes easier to trade, you're now netting money as opposed to uh, just digging out of a hole and getting back to zero. So that's a big thing. So I'm really proud of Ranesh for that because he's really bought into the concept of acting like a pro which sometimes meaning sizing up, sometimes being in cash, sometimes working a position. And again, it's 80 minutes can seem like an eternity for a day trader. But think about that. That's what our community is built on. We're not in there just placing trades to be active. We're placing trades when there's money to be made. And again, kicking out the losers and then getting putting yourself in position to win. Uh, Aaron, I know, has been a member of our community probably for about um, six months now. And just an amazing big win yesterday. And we're going to talk about the trades and the, and the type of opportunities that we're going to talk about today. And uh, Aaron actually had a $9.25 day, uh, $9 day trade yesterday in AFRM. So I'm really, really excited uh, for Aaron yesterday. So we're going to jump into some of the ideas today. Uh, we're going to hop on over into the charts. Um, but I want to come back and just say to those three people, Juan, Rinesh, and Aaron, I'm very 
I'm very grateful that you're in our in our uh, boot camp and in our community because I love I love to share in your success, not because I'm taking credit, but because I get excited that you're winning. So now we're going to walk our way over into the futures. We actually mapped out what we expected to happen over the over a few days, and we actually hit the number one objective, and that was a big deal. Now today we need to see we need to see are we going to hold that objective? And I'm specifically talking about this. Coming into the week, we said that the only way for us to start feeling conviction in our ideas is that we needed to start to see the weekly chart turn positive. So now we actually have what's known as a bullish U-turn here on the SPY, and we're now trading above Monday's opening price. So if you're looking at the SPY and you need a simple way to read the tape before you look to buy stocks, 433 in the SPY ETF is the level that we're watching. Okay, that's a big deal. So keep an eye on SPY 433. We're going to get into Roku. You know what? Let's actually jump right into Roku right now uh, because it's actually a big question that we've been getting for quite a bit of time now is, can I buy Roku? Roku has fallen from 490 all the way down to 300. It's $190 sell-off. I want to start buying Roku. And together, we've been working the charts. We've been seeing that Roku continues to go down. So again, here's one way of working the chart. And then that's where it broke the trend. Again, I want to walk you through how to read the tape and how to work the charts. So that's the first line. Push down, broke the trend, has to go above that to get comfortable, start looking for new longs there. Next, we work our way over. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let me get that off of there. And now we go here. And you have to have both places. Where? was the low in a downtrend, bearish order flow. Where was the low and where was the break? So now it's in that box. And again, if you remember, we spoke about a book probably about two weeks ago, um, Nicholas Darvis, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. If you don't know it, he was written, written in 1950-something. And he was actually a professional dancer, but he made $2 million in the stock market using something very similar to this, where a stock goes in a box and then he watches the next box and he watches the next box. So Roku was stuck in that box then. You're looking to see, does it get out of that box or does it make new levels? And in this case here, Roku actually broke down and started a new box. So as we started to work our way across, that's the line in the sand. That's where it broke. And here's the new box in Roku. Now, it's pretty exciting. And again, this is a big part of tape reading. If you're not doing this, you need to start doing this. There's so much more than just the price action. Price action and how much money was spent to create that price action you start to see now that Roku, the last three or four days, is trading well above its average volume, and these two days were gigantic. This three-day pattern here is something you probably want to take a screenshot of. You want to note it. It pushed down on heavy volume. The next day, the stock paused, and then yesterday, the stock rallied. So that final push down with big volume that does not follow through and then rallies two days later on heavier volume – that makes me sit up on my seat. And now Roku, I, my, from just something I was watching and scanning to now it's in my tracking journal. Okay, so now Roku is in my swing trade tracking journal, but you can see the size of the box now, essentially 340. And if you really, honestly, if you want to take it out, you could actually use that box and move it down a little bit lower. I know that's where it broke, but it was only up there for one day. So it really wasn't that significant. If we're looking across now, 323 area, would confirm a reversal back up to the upside in Roku for me to start building a new position. So 323, which are actually kind of above there right now, uh, 327. So that means that today, that was the level I was watching. We're now opening above that. But remember, opening there and, and staying there is not the same thing. And you could actually take a look at PLTR uh, from yesterday. Uh, monster move. It was up 13% after hours after it got that government contract opened up significantly higher and got and just melted the rest of the day on the day that the market was on fire. So here's the thing. Remember what we started today talking about? We talked about the SPY ETF and we had our weekly objective, had to get back to that level and hold it. That's the tape reading aspect of watching the market, right? That's the first part of it. We're also going to dive a little bit deeper into this today because we have a bunch of stocks we're going to take a look at on a sector rotation perspective. But I want to make sure that we stick with Roku because I want to map out the scenario that's in my mind right now. There's two things that we're going to be looking for. When we bottom out after a significant move to the downside, 
First thing we're looking for is signs of smart money stepping in and saying, we're going to commit some real money to this. We saw that push down. It stopped going down. The next day, it went inside. So the selling stopped the next day. Then yesterday, not only did it not go down, but buying came in, closed near the highs. It was like an $18 trading range yesterday. And today, it's following through. Something changed on the tape in Roku. So remember what we keep saying about order flow. When you spot the smart money and they're starting to build a position, when they're starting, you need to have the same mindset that say, well, somebody with deep pockets, somebody with a lot of money started to buy Roku stock. But the biggest thing I just said is they started to buy Roku stock. So you need to think like the big money. You need to start thinking like the smart money, which is it's still going down. We're starting to build a position, which means that whatever your intended risk is, whatever your intended share size is, needs to match what the smart money is doing, which means at this point, you go in with your initial position and wait for feedback before you start. So what is the feedback that we're looking for? Well, you hear me talk about it every day, a push and a pause, a push and a pause. We are now looking for the first entry here above the level we just mentioned. We're looking for a push, maybe three, five, seven days, a couple of days pausing. If that pause happens on lighter volume, that's where we would look to add the second piece. So that's how we're mapping out the entire trade. Now, what's kind of cool about this, especially when you have a big move like this, is you start to put projections on there. What is the initial target if we do start to rally? You want to have a realistic number. And we've talked about Fibonacci levels for a few lessons now. But simply the way that I do it is I normally look for 50% move back. So we're essentially looking at right around the 390, 395 area. If we bottom out, if we have a push and a pause and we start to see the smart money, all right, more money. I'm going to commit more capital. I'm going to commit more capital. We start working into the position with them. 390, 395 would be the level that I'm going to be looking for up in Roku. So hopefully you map that all out. If we went a little bit fast for you, um, I want to make sure that we cover as much as possible in this uh, shorter time frame. Uh, I want to say hello to a couple of people. Um, let's see, Raymond. Uh, recently realized I'm trading out of desperation because I need income. I've been there. Um, how can I get away from this mental downfall? Well, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna respect Raymond here, and I'm gonna give him some real world um, real world love. <laughs> Maybe tough love. I don't know. Um, for those of you that don't know, prior to me starting trading in 2000, I, my family actually owned a deli on Long Island. Uh, and I absolutely hated it, <laughs> could not stand it. It was burning a hole in my stomach every day. Um, so what I did was I left the family business and I actually started to study to get my licenses. And at that point, when you're, you're, you're learning a new, in you're learning a way to make a new income, you have to do what it takes. You know, if you have to work part-time jobs, if you have to start small, if you have to have two jobs, uh, but you have to do whatever it takes. And we talk about this all the time. When you have a uh, burning desire in your stomach, but you kind of feel like you're the supercharged battery and you don't have a spot to plug it in, you have to make sure that you focus on the priorities right now. And Raymond, right now, the priorities would be building up your capital $100 at a time, $1,000 at a time. But if you're trading out of desperation right now, which again, in my trading firm, I had the same, um, I had this conversation probably a thousand times when I had my firm in New York City, you have to take a step back if that means getting a part-time job to pay the bills so you can trade unemotionally, that's what you have to do right now. Remember, what goes on right now is just a little blip in the longer term part of your career. And it doesn't matter if you have to take a step back and be like, I'm, you know what, I'm going to do something else for three months and build up my capital so that when I start trading again, I'm trading the order flow, I'm reading the tape, and your heartbeat is not going up and down every single time that stock goes up, you're all excited, stock goes down, and you feel like, you, you, you know, you feel horrible. You want to get to the point where your trading is running a business. And in order to run that business, you need to be um, you need to be in the right frame of mind. And if you're not in the right frame of mind right now, the biggest thing to do is first lower your position size while you're still getting positive. And getting positive means you need to be positive for at least a few months to feel like your strategy is working. If your strategy is not working. That means that there's a gap between your current reality and where you want to be. So first, dial down your position size and start to get green. If you can't dial it down and get green, then you need a new strategy. What you're doing right now is not working. Maybe it's the stocks. Maybe it's how you're reading the order flow. Maybe it's how you're reading the tape. Maybe you're just trading too big right now, and maybe you know what you're doing, but you're getting scared out of positions. 
Try and make it back $100 at a time. Then try and make it back $1,000 at a time. But you have to take a step back and you have to have a big conversation with yourself. And I've done this a million times. Get a legal pad, write down everything that is not working. And that's the first priority is to eliminate that garbage. Stop picking tops, stop picking bottoms, stop trading size, and narrow your list down to the stocks that, again, we'll start getting into this now, into sector rotation. So when we start talking about sector rotation, Raymond, start getting a little bit more deeper into the stocks that are obvious right now. So today we've obviously been talking about energy stocks. They've they've lost the bid a little bit, a little bit of pressure is taken off of that. So now today we're going to shift over into some of the stocks, some of the leaders that are now moving in the direction. We're going to take a look at communication services. We've been watching financials. We're going to take a look at some tech stocks that woke up a little bit. Okay. So Raymond, I, I, I can't express this strongly enough because I, I want to stay here out of complete respect for you because for you to type that in there uh, means that you really want you really want to succeed. I'm telling you right now, as a friend, as somebody who's been through that, as somebody who's coached literally, not even exaggerating, literally thousands of traders through this, um, just take a step back. If it means you got to not trade for a week to write down what works, take a step back. If it means you need to lower your share size, take a step back. If it means that you need to get a part-time job so you're not trading the PL and you're not driving yourself crazy, that's fine. You have to think about the long career that you want to have. And this is just one little tiny blip. And I'm going to say this to you and I'm going to say this to everybody. If what you're doing is not working and you're not willing to admit it and you're not willing to change things or at least be open to changing what's not working, then you really don't want it bad enough because then you're trading from your ego and you're trying to prove yourself right as opposed to trying to get feedback. This works. That doesn't work. This works. That doesn't work. And you make a big list of what doesn't work. You stay away from it. You make that smaller list of exactly what does work. And that's how you become a champion. That's how you become somebody who can deal with any kind of adversity. You have to take a step back or you're going to blow up your account. I'm telling you as a friend, I'm not giving you advice. I'm telling you as a friend, dial it back. Think big picture. That's the key here. Don't think about, oh my gosh, I might have to drive an Uber for a month. Who cares? Who cares? Because at the, if you live your life for two years like nobody else will, you'll live the rest of your life like everybody else wishes they could because you took the time to do it right. I can't stress that strongly enough. If we all get together, I'm telling you right now, I have some stories about <laughs> adversity that you wouldn't believe, but you know what? You come out the other side and that adversity is, is, a, is, a, is a core part of you that nobody can ever take away. But I'm telling you, Raymond, you have to think long term. All right. Think long term. Don't worry about the steps you need to take over the next two months. Build that foundation to become successful. And sometimes that means taking a step back and reevaluating, but especially lowering your position size while you're in that kind of mental state. All right. So we want to get right into um, we want to get into some ideas today. We've already talked about the energy stocks have kind of lost the bit a little bit, but still very, very strong across the board. You can see some selling yesterday. We're going to look at communication services today and a bunch of technology stocks woke up today. So we're actually going to talk about those. Um, I want to talk about Tilray this morning, which is another stock uh, that is very, very popular. So Tilray actually had earnings this morning. Um, I know a bunch of people in our community talk about it quite a bit. You can see that it's actually up seven cents this morning, uh, but they actually reported earnings today and they missed year over year. So that's really the biggest thing. When you start to look at um, what a company's doing. There's really no other no other number uh, that matters most. Is did they actually make money? Did they actually? And how does it look year over year? So they actually missed. So they're kind of just floating right now. It didn't blow away anything. Nothing. Uh, no pun intended. Tilray right, pot stock. <laughs> but here's the big thing that I think is super interesting. Okay. Um, and look, I, I don't know how anybody feels about this. I'm. Uh, <laughs> I've been an entrepreneur since 1988. So I just want to. So I just the company didn't make money, okay? But the firm awarded the CEO a thirteen million dollar cash bonus this year. Does that make any sense? I, I, not to me. I, I don't know. If I'm on the board of directors of this company, we're still not making money. What is this guy doing to earn a thirteen million dollar bonus in a year they didn't make money? What's he going to get when they do make money? It's a ten dollar stock. Come on, man. <laughs> no, that's not the way things work. I, I don't know. Maybe that's just my opinion. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So stock futures today. 
rising after obviously the big story is the debt limit extension. Again, we're not going to get into politics here, but we are going to talk about the reason they're giving that stocks are rising right now is the limit. They're talking, they're having good conversations. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if that we get follow through. But what I want to talk about today is a couple of things. But first, in interesting story here, George Soros fund uh, confirming that they own Bitcoin. So before we start getting into some stocks to buy, specifically tech stocks, uh, keeping an eye on Bitcoin, which has had a really vicious rally over the last five days, got all the way up to 56,000, 56,000. But the reason I want to point this out, and I'm going to drill this out just a little bit. This is one of the biggest questions we get and easily one of the biggest mistakes that traders make is you look at it this, you pull up the headline for Bitcoin. Maybe you read the Soros headline. Maybe you read it crunch through 56,000. You're like, yeah, I got to buy this thing today. Well, you know what? That's a 26,000 point move in five days. Okay, let's go over to the continuous contract. And this is a tape reading lesson. Let's go over to the continuous contract and see when this has moved that far and what happens next. Okay, so if we get into it here and we take a look, how many times did the stock move that far that fast and what happened after that? Okay, what happened after that? What happened after that? Okay. Today is not the day to load up on Bitcoin. Today is the day to maybe put up a trailing stop if it's a swing trade, maybe wait for it to pull back a day or two, maybe 25% of that recent move that it just went up. Today is not the day to get long Bitcoin. Awesome if you're long already. That's tape reading 101. You're buying too late. Keep that money in your pocket, get a better risk reward, then look for the next spot. All right. Okay. So Chris Mooney, I want to highlight what Chris Mooney said here because Chris has been a valued member of our community for a while who also, I know, and Chris, I know you won't mind if I say this, Chris and I, we had some conversations and he listened to everything about while you're learning, you dial back your risk per trade until you get feedback from actual P&L. And I'm not talking about one day. I'm not talking about trading AFRM yesterday, having the stock explode. You have one good day and you're like, yeah, now I'm going to size up. That's dopey. <laughs> One day is not a business. That's like running a business saying we had a good day yesterday, double the size of our office space. That's not good business. Chris did one of the smartest things I've ever seen in our community. He dialed it all the way back. You know, we talk about risking 1%, 2% while he was learning to get the business off the ground and really understand order flow and tape reading. And just as important, gain his confidence. He lowered it to less than 1% per trade. And you know what that did? That allowed him to actually understand what trading is all about. So now he's come out the other side. He can be patient when there's nothing there and he understands when to size up when it's obvious. Those are the steps that we cover over and over and over again in the boot camp. And hopefully you're understanding them here. Obviously, we do a lot more detail in the boot camp, but I can't stress strongly enough. Give yourself a chance to be awesome. It's hard to be awesome overnight. You have to do the work. You have to do what we call. Um, when I first started, you know, I have a flashlight at night and you're reading at one o'clock in the morning. You have to do those flashlight seminars so that it's one o'clock in the morning and you're reading and you're studying Napoleon Hill. You're studying Think and Grow Rich. You're studying Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. You know, you, you're reading all of the, the classic books in the off hours. If there's anything you learn is that how you spend your spare time will dictate how you spend your future. Think about that. How many hours are you wasting that have nothing to do with where you want to go? How you spend your spare time will dictate how you spend your future. Now we're going to jump into some other stocks. We've talked about Tilray, nothing with the earnings. We talked about the debt ceiling today. All right. Tesla. Tesla stock's kind of floating around right now, right? So if we look at Tesla, just kind of drifting over the last few days after having this big breakout, right? Still pausing. And actually, you can see how we work the charts a little bit here. Nice rally, went a little bit of parabolic. We had to redraw the trend. We're still well above. We're pausing. The big news for Tesla to, uh, this weekend, actually, Elon Musk going to Germany, and he's going to actually host a country fair or some garbage like that. But this is the thing. The Gigafactory in Germany, they're looking for new expansion out there. This could be monstrous for this stock. Something to keep an eye on. We're still watching Tesla, excuse me, every single day. Okay. We also talked about Bitcoin. We covered that. Uh, and we talked about celebrating there. So I want to give you more. We obviously talked about uh, Roku today, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into um, some of the other stocks um, that we've been watching for a while now and actually stocks that are coming in play today. So I want to give this full screen because I want to light it up for you. We've talked about on the sector rotation list, 
uh, communication services. So we also get some questions on what stocks in communication services should I be looking at? Right now, the stocks that are at the top of the list for me are right here. LYV, if you've been a regular viewer of the channel, we had alerts set over here up at 90, pushed up to 90. This is, this is something you want a snapshot. When you have a big level, you punch through, you pause, and then you take off. That is a textbook image of what you want to look at for a breakout trade. Okay, that's a textbook image right there. All right. Now, next one in communication services, we're going to take a look at the granddaddy right now, which is Netflix. Netflix continues to grind higher, both on the daily chart, the weekly chart, and the monthly chart, punching through new all. Look at the last three months when it finally got out of this window. So you know what's kind of cool here, too? Now, we just talked about the box. Can you visualize that box? Can you visualize that box? Can you visualize that box? Nothing to do in the box. You want it to get out of the box, and now it's clearly out of the box. So now Tesla, uh, excuse me, Netflix, we've now gone up pretty pretty good in the last couple of days, 595 to 6. 40. There's still some room to the upside, but now that we are about four or five days into the move, we're now a little bit past the optimal entry in Netflix. So you could still look to get long, but because if this was the profit potential and we're kind of there right now, what the stock normally does for a swing trade, you could still enter the position. But for me personally, it'd be less share size on the initial entry, looking for the stock to push up, pause a little bit, and then look to add the next trade. So those are the communication sector ones that are in play right now. Something else that we've been watching that is very close to a breakout to the upside is NetTees. So if we if we zoom this out just a little bit, you can see the box that it's in right now. But again, look at the increase in volume and price has not gone down. So we're kind of leaning on this 80 level as being a support, but we're still in this short term downtrend. Yesterday was awesome. Double normal volume got above the average of what has been doing the last few days. And again, hopefully you're learning how to work the charts with us. You need to know where the most recent price action is. So really right now, yesterday was a good start. And remember, I want to come back on the screen because this is important. Remember what I just said about 10 minutes ago about tracking and following the smart money? And you have to have the same mindset that they do. So if you're looking to, whether it's Roku or whether it's something like this, if this is only one day of them finally stepping up and paying higher prices, that means it's the first day that they stepped up and spent some real money. So now if this is the first day not the first week, not the first month, the first day. We should be looking at this as our initial position, looking to start building a position here in NetEase. It wouldn't be a full position. Conservatively, be waiting for it to get over 91 and maybe get one more day. But it's really more about the mindset of, of seeing what they're doing and then mimicking what the smart money's doing from a position size perspective. All right. We, we talked about some tech stocks. We're going to work our way over into um, some tech stocks we're keeping an eye on today. Uh, and we're going to start the list out with what we just talked about, which is AFRM. If you haven't been watching this one, it's all over the news. It's in our list. The activity level exploded. The average true range exploded. The volume exploded. And it's getting a lot of news. And again, just to give you some context, that's what day traders are looking at yesterday. Um, this was the trade that Aaron was talking about that I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, this was actually where we started talking about the profit maximizer. So great job, Aaron. So AFRM. MRVL. Again, what we're doing right now, just to give everybody context, we're looking at technology, what came off the mat and start working its way up the list. We're starting to find some early entries into technology or some stocks that are doing something significant. Okay. Marvel, MRVL, to put this on a little bit bigger perspective, trading at or near all time highs right now. So we're looking at MRVL. We've also been trading net in our community for the last few days. So again, obviously, we talked about this last week. We had an inside candlestick into a bullish U-turn, into well bid, into a bullish gap, into two monster paydays. And again, I can't stress this strongly enough. It's how we started today's call out talking about Ranesh managing the downside and being patient. We talked about him being patient for the first 80 minutes of the day, which is gigantic for a day trader. It's not easy to do if you don't have the right mindset. And then you look at a stock like this, you're patient, you let it unfold two days, and then you throw AFRM on top of that. Two days makes your entire month. If you had a tough September, this could have made your entire month back. Remember, it's about stacking the order flow, reading the tape, and reversing the risk. This is stacking the order flow and reading the tape. Reversing the risk is getting to the point where you understand trade management and all that kind of stuff. So net is another one. A little bit different scenario, though, here in net. Today, we're looking for a bullish echo because we're actually heading up to a level of resistance. So from a day, day trading perspective, looks still good. Needs to meet our criteria. 
But we got to be aware of that resistance that's up there, but it's still going to be in the watch list today. All right. So expanding over into some other tech stocks, D-O-C-N. Also looking right. And this is that kind of cool here because you remember we drew this line. You can see that it's in a box. It did not break down below the box and it's kind of stuck in the middle. So we'll be looking for a trade between here and 88, which is still another $3.88, uh, $3.80 away. Asana, we've been watching this one for the better part of a couple of months now. And what's interesting about this too is we watched the breakout here and you can see how clearly the volume exploded here. Um, and we, we had it in our tracking journal this entire time. We really haven't started aggressively trading it since earnings came out over here. So we kind of had an awesome couple of weeks here. This pullback being a little bit of patient. And again, you can see inside to well bid to well bid again. And look where it is now. All right. This is what it means to track the order flow. And we're actually going to finish up with snow. Snow actually coming off the mat. Bullish U-turn into well bid and resistance all the way up around three, let's say 325. All right. So we got a lot going on today. We talked about Tilray and earnings. A couple of people posted in. Uh, Mark K posted the uh, quarter over quarter earnings. Strong on cannabis demand. Still waiting to see that volume step up. So those are good numbers, Mark. Let's see if they actually end up having the smart money dip their toes in and we start to see volume like we saw in Roku. So we gave a big breakdown on price targets for Roku, trade management for Roku, what we need to see next in Roku. Remember, we said push and pause and we had that target uh, that we just set. Uh, Tilray, we're waiting to see if they bounce. We just looked at a couple of communication services. We looked at a bunch of tech stocks. Energy stocks taking a little bit of a pause right now. So those are going to kind of work their way to the other side of the list. And we're going to look to see uh, what else is in play for today and for the rest of the week. So um, again, I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. I really, really appreciate it. It really shows how badly you want it. I just want to, I, I want to leave with the conversation that we had about adversity. Um, look, Everybody on this call at some point, especially in trading, especially when you're learning, you could feel like, wow, I couldn't hit water if I fell out of a boat. I've been there. And you want to know how you come out the other side? You show what you're made of. Stop whining. <laughs> I don't know if there's any other way to say it. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Get tough. Everybody goes through that kind of stuff. Everybody. Everybody has adversity. What makes the difference is how you handle it. Everybody knows how to celebrate the winning touchdown. But what makes you is when it's tough and you stand up and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. And you come out the other side because you chose to learn from it and not be crippled by it. So if you're having a little bit of a tough time right now, sit up, pull your shoulders back and say, uh-uh, if that's all you got, I'm getting to the other side because that's not enough to knock me down. All right. Have an awesome day, everybody. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hit that like button. It would tell me that you like this kind of videos too. All right. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thank you.